What is going on, Wake Up Wealthy listeners? Welcome back to the Wake Up Wealthy podcast. You have myself, Brody Kern, and head coach Julian Rosen in the seat today. Julian, what are we talking about? Oh, putting me on the hot seat, are we? All right, well, with the timing of everything being, uh, we're recording this on what? January, January 5th? 5th? 15th? January 5th. Um, I say today we're going to tell you how to make 2021 the year of your life that is filled with the least bullshit, the least excuses, the least uh, blockages. You know, like I think a lot of, a lot of ambitious men they they kind of ha- hit these spurts like things go well then things don't go well um things seem to flow and then things seem super blocked things when they're going well these high highs and then when the roller coaster turns down um we kind of fall into these low lows and I, and I think a lot of dudes that come into our program are riding that roller coaster like good months bad months consistent months inconsistent months months of mental clarity and and self-acceptance months of self-loathing judgment rejection and so Today we're really going to go over our most our most potent uh, strategies and systems that we've used successfully hundreds of times to to collapse that to collapse that um, that roller coaster to take you off that roller coaster so that 2021 you experience really prolonged prolonged periods of growth of of profitability of success of keeping promises to yourself both in your personal life in your habits in your fitness routines but also in your production in your business in your leadership. Um, because once you really fine tune this, you, you see it really becomes an art and a science. There is literally a predictable and proven system to prolonging these periods of, you know, we can call them flow state, we can call them high production periods, things where things seem to click and, and really minimize these periods of your life personally and professionally where, again, it just feels like everything needs force, everything feels sticky, everything is hard, everything seems to be working against you, you can, yes, you can actually minimize those periods of, of resistance and friction and maximize and prolong those periods of, of execution, things clicking, things lining up, solving problems, having things go your way, and feeling really, really good while you do it. So um, we can tackle that in like 25 minutes, right? Yeah, well, I mean, you just went on a whole run, so. <laughs> Dude, I think the most interesting thing that we look at when guys come in to work with us and we're looking at the topic of predictability, right? The topic here is getting off of this roller coaster of having great months, of being on high highs, and then hitting super low lows. And so when we really look at these individuals, these men, these business owners, when they come in to work with us and they're like, you know, I I, I can't find any level of consistency because I'll have these big months and then I'll fall way off. And really the first question is, what are you doing in the months that allow you to create really high highs, right? What are the things that contribute to your success in the months where you're doing well, the months where you're feeling well, the months where you were in that flow state feeling consistent? And we'll find that guys oftentimes aren't even taking an audit of that, right? They'll come off the high, they'll be like, dude, I'm doing fucking amazing, and then it'll swing down. And they, and rather than figuring out why it swung down, rather than figuring out what got them to that high, they just start beating themselves up. They start judging themselves because they think there's some lesser version of what they were the month before. And really, dude, these ebbs and flows, these ups and downs, until you start to create predictability in your personal performance, your business, and the way that you look at the world and the frameworks that you see things through, you cannot create the consistency that you are looking for. And so the thing that we have to do now is really start to take an audit of, hey, what contributes to our success and what doesn't? If we want to minimize bullshit and we want to minimize those low periods, we have to first identify what is serving us. What is actually moving the needle forward? And so if you're listening to this right now and you're looking back at 2020 and really thinking about what contributed to your success over the last year in the in the periods or the moments however however few or far between they were when you were successful what were the contributors i think it's important to identify those it's important to audit those it's a a practice that we implement inside of the brotherhood every single week reflect and project we do it at at a micro scale weekly we do it at at a macro scale you know monthly quarterly yearly um and it's practice that guys just aren't doing often enough yeah, and like, and one thing, this is literally just leveraging the law of cause and effect. Like it's yeah. the law of cause and effect, it's kind of like electricity. Like electricity can either work for you or against you, but electricity is just gonna do what electricity does. You can use it to power your house, you can use it to electrocute yourself, sticking a fork in the socket, right? Like cause and effect is the same way. It's always gonna be an effect. Now you can either operate ignorantly of it and let it work against you, or you can open your eyes to it, start to leverage it and start to create predictable income, predictable growth in your life and in your business. And so 
like you cannot master what you do not know. You cannot master what you do not see. And so, so many guys, when they come into our program, they're leaving so much money on the table simply because they haven't taken time to actually look at the ingredients of, yeah, those good months, what made them good? Those bad months, what, what did you do more of or less of that changed the quality of that month? And so a lot of guys, they live this reactive lifestyle and they're like, well, when things are going well, I will feel well. When things start to turn and go poorly, well, I begin to think poorly, feel poorly, start to fear starts to take over, doubt starts to take over. And so this is flip-flopping the equation of cause and effect. When you let your circumstances dictate what's going on inside of you, that is making basically something that is powerless, you're giving it all the power. You see, you created those circumstances. You, by what you did, what you thought, what you chose, what you didn't choose to do, where you operated with intention versus where you operated on autopilot. Those were the ingredients that put you in that great place or those are the ingredients that put you in that not so great place. And so when you take this next level of self-awareness, you know, Brody said, take an audit. We force all of our guys to take a quarterly audit, a monthly audit. We do it every single week. We have a weekly audit. We actually do it every single day with the daily power score, right? Like we even have our guys take daily audits. Where's your time going? Where's your energy going? What is the caliber and consistency of what you're doing? And when you can actually objectively, and objectively means just look at it. Don't judge it, don't shame it. You just look at it. Just like a football team watches game tape, you look at it. And you just take in that audit of what goes well, what is the cause, what is positively contributing to the state you're in, what is positively contributing to the results you're seeing, and what is what is taking away from those things. And then it is just optimization. It's doing more of what works, doing less of what doesn't, and testing. And so a lot of guys, once you can fully accept that you are the place of power, you are the source of all these decisions, you are the source of those high highs, but you're also the source of the low, those low lows. It's not life favoring you one month and then life coming to screw you over the next month. That's not, that's not how life operates. Life is a mirror. A mirror isn't nice to you one day and mean to you the next day. The mirror can only do one simple thing and that is reflect. Reflect what is standing in front of it. And that's what that audit, that, that next level of awareness allows you to do so that you have the power back. And so let's talk about how to do this audit. I, I want to make sure that every podcast, we leave you guys with something tactical. And so it's like, we have tons of things that we do for our clients inside of the Wake Up Wealthy Brotherhood. And if you want to get that next level of tracking and auditing and systems and strategies, you know where to find us, you know where to get information about the Wake Up Wealthy Brotherhood. But for sake of this podcast, I want to leave you with something basic that oftentimes we send clients to do because it's so fucking simple. And so it's like, let's take an audit of what we've done in the last week, right? I want you to look at the last seven days of your life, everything that you did and start to write down all the actions that you did day by day by day. Remember as much as you possibly can about what you did, right? Whether that's literally drove to the gym, like the most basic shit and humor me in doing this because I promise you there is a tangible result. And so really you're going to build this big list of everything that you did in the last seven days, right? Then I want you to make two columns. First column being this serves me and my end goals. And second column being this doesn't serve anything, right? This doesn't move the needle forward at all. And I want you to start to place these things in each of these two columns. What you will find is that you will be shocked at how many actions you were taking that you will put into the doesn't serve anything column. Step number one is get rid of all of those. We do so much shit day to day to day to day that doesn't serve our end goal. And there is no purpose, no reason for us to be doing those things, yet we do them all the time. And when you really start to pay attention to, hey, like once you shed light on that, you can't do that thing again. Once you shed light onto something that you were doing habitually and you put it in a column saying, I know this doesn't serve me. I know this doesn't move the needle forward. I can assure you, you will not be taking that action again because you will be focused on what actually moves the needle forward. Yeah. And one thing I was going to ask you is why, right? Like, <clears throat> because when you, when you create your list of things that don't serve you, there's going to be some usual suspects on there. There's gonna be some things on that list. There's gonna be some shit where you're like, yeah, dude, that's been there a long time. Like, dude, wasting time on social media, that's been there a long time. I've known that, that's been in the background. I just can't seem to kick it. Or, you know, like sleeping through the alarm I set so I can do my morning routine. Like, yeah, I get it, that doesn't serve me. I've, you know, I've low key been aware of it for a very long time. What is wrong with me? 
What is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? Why? Why is this so hard? Why do I resist this? And so when when guys go down that loophole, they're like, why? Why is this so hard for me? They start to they start to assign themselves this feeling of dysfunction. They start to assign, they start to label themselves as weak or incapable. And then obviously the world we live in makes it super fucking easy to really layer on the shame and layer on the guilt just through comparison. All of the channels of comparison that we have just in our modern world. And so Dude, you're human. That's just how the human brain operates. We resist what we need the most. We resist what we need the most. We resist, like, it's just how it is. And it doesn't matter what level you're at. It doesn't matter if you're a multiple seven figure earner. There's still gonna be things in your life, in your surroundings, in your business that will need to change, that you will need to add or let go of. And guess what? You'll also resist those things. It's, it's just like weight on the bar will always be heavy. And once you are adequate at that weight, you add more weight so that you can continue your evolution in your fitness or whatever. And so it's like, there's nothing inherently wrong with you. If those things on the list that doesn't serve you, if you've kept them in your life way longer than you know they should have been there, right? And so once you can totally accept that, totally accept yourself, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing defective about you. There's nothing weak about you. It's just the way all humans get their wiring in the beginning then once you strip away the shame and the guilt, you're just like, oh, I'm ready to go to work on this, right? Like there's no way around that. I'm ready to go to work on this. I'm ready to get uncomfortable. I'm ready to make decisions in a new way. You cannot make the same decisions and expect your life to change. Like that's, again, cause and effect. Like a lot of this shit comes back to cause and effect. You cannot make the same decisions and expect things to happen differently. And so you just go to work on those things on that list one at a time. We're not saying snap your fingers and magically get rid of all that stuff at once, right? Like it's a journey. There's work there. There's lessons for you to learn in the letting go of those things. There's stories about yourself you need to let go of. There's beliefs about yourself, beliefs that you've inherited from your conditioning, from beliefs about money, success, relationships, love, sex, friendship, anything, right? Like we learn so many things, so many imperfect lessons from imperfect teachers that we never asked for, right? And so you'll find that in going through that list and getting rid of those things that you actually come face to face with those deep seated things and have the opportunity to let them go, right? So it's like the thing on the list is just the manifested form of the deeper underlying belief holding it in place. You get the opportunity and the privilege to attack both. And that's where like, that's how we've seen someone like, you know, Steve, Right in, in 90 days, quintuple his income, grow his business, totally delegate his business, get his personal life in order. Like we've had the, this client who, you know, he's our client that we reference. We're like, if it works for this guy, it'll probably work for anybody. Not to be a dick, but like, like he's that kind of guy. And, and right now he's, he's one of the most successful dudes that I've ever met in his age bracket. Like for, Correct. you know what I mean? And like, yeah, in his space, in his age bracket, he absolutely yeah. smashes it. Yeah. And I mean, when he came to us, he was like, dude, I'm a fucking mess. Everybody calls me a mess. Like the this disaster. is the disaster. What do we, what do we do here? And so we started to really look at these things because it is important, right? Like here, I talked about this basic practice of making a tangible list and then looking at the things that don't serve you. But then Julian brought a great point of, of why, right? Well, why are we scrolling social media? Well, like in my case, in the past, I was very addicted to that idea of comparison, right? Subconsciously, I was doing it over and over and over and it wasn't serving me at all. It was very destructive. I mean, dude, comparison is literally the killer of personality. When you start to get caught up in comparing yourself and, and auditing like your current habits against someone else's reality, you will totally fuck yourself because it's all individual. It, everything is individual. And so when you're taking these audits, you're not putting them against someone else's fucking goals or someone else's results because you have no idea, no idea what led up to that and what actually contributed to that. It is important to focus on our deal right? Yes, you can learn from other people. You can take insights from other people, but don't compare their results to yours. It's a completely different book. It's a completely different ball game. It's not even in the same fucking realm of where you were trying to go. You have to focus on who you want to be, who you want to be in the future, and then reverse engineer that of what is going to lead up to me being that person. What types of things does that person do? right? The person who has those types of results that I want, what do they do on a daily basis and start to do those things? It's very, very basic when you just pay attention. Almost any lesson or conversation that I have with an individual inside of our brotherhood, I end up a lot at this, at this topic of just fucking pay attention, dude. 
you are smart enough to figure it out. You completely have everything that you need to succeed inside of the game of business, inside of the game of life, if you just pay attention to the right shit, if you just pay attention to what is actually contributing to results and what isn't serving me, rather than paying attention to someone else's results and then beating yourself up because you don't have it. Comparison. Comparison is one of those things that, you know, we said at the beginning of this podcast, how do we... How do we minimize those drops, those dips where, again, the disparity between your good months and your bad months, your good weeks and your bad weeks, right? And so comparison would be one of those things, getting clear on, on where, where your time and energy is going, the things that serve you, the things that don't serve you. But like last but not least, and this is something that we literally just talked about on a coaching call on Sunday. You remember, right, on Sunday? Yeah, uh, So like here, here's the insider tip, like, like if you go into the most successful circles, right? Yeah, I remember of, this. <laughs> of people. You go into the most successful circles of people, right? Because everybody, like, man, marketing has really uh, made things very elegant and layered and rich. But if you cut to the core of what makes successful people really, really, really successful is every single week or every single day or every single month or whatever increment of time, they get crystal clear on what they want and why. What does it mean to them? Right? Like you got to get clear on what you personally want, not what you think you should want, but what you personally want. And what does it mean to you? What does it mean once you are at that level of success? What does it mean for you personally and for your family and the people you care about to make that amount of money or to have that type of, to have that type of level of fitness or to have that whatever skill you want to acquire in, in this year, whatever. What do you want specifically, not broadly, specifically? And then what does it mean to you? What does it mean to you? And then like time block. Like I'm, I'd like, I'm not trying to be like a dick and how simple all this is. Time block, where's your time gonna go? Can you choose to have your time align with those things that you specifically want? Can you do that? And within this window, within this window of getting clear on what you want, getting clear on what it means to you and time blocking, because when you time block, you make a decision, the word decide literally means to cut off all else. So when you decide, you are saying, I'm choosing this, and by choosing this, I am choosing that all this other stuff around it no longer exists to me. All this other stuff is no longer an option to me. I've chosen this, I've zoomed in on this, everything else is, I got the blinders on. That's what a decision means. And so when you decide to put your time somewhere and you keep that promise to yourself from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, you keep those promises to yourself, you cannot not win, you will win. Because at the end of that day, by keeping those promises to yourself, again, you'll have that objective feedback of what works, what doesn't work, what serves you, what doesn't serve you. And once you're aware of it, you'll stop doing the shit that screws you over. Like none of us wake up every morning and, and say, all right, on my to-do list today, I'm gonna meditate, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna screw myself over, I'm gonna devalue myself, I'm gonna compare myself. We don't consciously choose to do the stuff that screws us. We, it happens unconsciously when we stop paying attention. So when you're clear on what you want, you're clear on what it means to you, you're clear because you've time blocked. Where's your time going? Where's your time going? Does it align with the things you said you wanted? And then you keep those promises to yourself, you'll win. You'll win because what works will continue to work. What no longer works, you'll become so blatantly aware of it that you'll drop it because no one consciously screws themselves over. And again, it's just like how Apple started with iPhone one and now we're at iPhone 55, right? Like 56. Yeah. 56, 69. <laughs> um, yikes. Yikes. But like that's, Yikers. How, that's how it happens, guys. That's how it happens, right? That's how it happens. So like your iterations won't be perfect, but you gotta go from 1.0 to get to 2.0. You gotta throw out 2.0 to get to 3.0. And so it's like, it's this shameless self acceptance as you are in the process of getting clear on what you want, getting clear on what it means to you, getting clear on where your time's going and keeping commitments to yourself. Those four things, you, any success formula that is being marketed digitally, like get to the core of it and I, like it's gonna contain those components. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like really focusing on the time, like, there's such a beautiful lesson in that. I'm glad I brought it up on Sunday's call. Dude, hats, nice hats off to me. Dude, on Thursday um, too, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I killed it. Too, so, um, talking about time blocking though, and talking talking about being a student of the calendar and really utilizing it well. Um, I've been I've been prepping a video about like the art of time blocking and what it really means there and how to get good at it. And if you don't follow us on YouTube, search Wake Up Wealthy on YouTube. You see my beautiful face, Julian's fugly face, and uh, you'll be able to get a lot of content there. We're about to be dropping a ton of YouTube videos and uh, a ton of more educational stuff like that, that I, I'm planning to record and put out to you guys. But I think that we, we brought out a lot of good lessons in this podcast about where do you need to head in 2021? And it starts with taking an audit 
of getting rid of things that don't serve you and then looking at the things that do serve you and filling up your calendar and utilizing your time intentionally to move the needle forward inside of your business, inside of your life, inside of your mind, inside of your body, inside of whatever area you were looking to move the needle forward in. And so... As always, we love having you guys on the podcast. We're going to be continuing to record episodes here at the office and dropping them out to you guys. So share the podcast, review the podcast, and we will see you guys on the next episode. See ya.